Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's Engineering Mechanics Static Effects Book. So we have this problem from chapter six, uh, which is asking, determine the force in each member of the truss, state if the members are intentional compression. Uh, we have this diagram here. I've replicated it on the, the right hand side here, um, just so that we can draw all over it basically. Let's get right into this problem. So we know that we have a fixed support at joint A and a roller support at joint C here. So immediately we can add some external forces to our diagram. <clears throat> so we can say we've got forces acting like this here, here and here. Let's just label these up so we could call this FA comma Y, this FA comma X and this Fc comma y here. So by inspection, when we consider the equilibrium of the truss as a whole, we can say Fa comma x is equal to 450, since it's countering this 450 pound external force here. And we can also say that 600, or this, this 600 pound force here, is equal to the sum of Fa comma y and Fc comma y. If we want to find Fa comma y and Fc comma y here, this equation alone doesn't give, enough, give us enough information. But as we've done in previous problems, we can make use of taking moments to solve for Fa comma y and Fc comma y here. So let's say, uh, where should we take moments about here? We could take moments, let's say about E, that might enable us to solve for uh, Fc comma y there. So we could say, the sum of moments about E acting clockwise is equal to zero. Therefore, things acting anti-clockwise or moments acting anti-clockwise are equal to moments acting uh, clockwise. So we're taking moments about E here. We know we've got uh, F, the, the, the Fa comma X moment acting uh, clockwise and the Fc comma Y moment acting uh, anti-clockwise. Uh, so we could say six, Fc comma y, six naturally coming from this perpendicular distance here. Um, six Fc comma y is equal to, now uh, we don't know this length here. Okay, we want to work out this length. Uh, let's add this to our diagram here. So naturally, this just becomes a simple trigonometry problem. If we want to solve for this length here, let's, let's just call it x for now. We note that we have a 30 degree angle here. We have a six, uh, a six foot uh, adjacent there and we're looking for our opposite. Okay, we're gonna use tan here. So uh, let's do that. We can say the tan in this instance of 30, uh, oh dear, <laughs> uh, is equal to uh, opposite over adjacent, which in this case is X over six. Therefore, X in this case is equal to six tan 30 which I know is equal to 2 root 3. So we can say then that this side on the left-hand side here is equal to 2 root 3. Okay, back to where we were earlier. So we, we were taking moments earlier. We have a uh, anti-clockwise moment of 6 Fcy, and we have a clockwise moment then of 2 root 3, uh, fa comma x. Note we, we, we calculated fa comma x earlier, it's 450, so we could just plug that in, right, 450. We can rearrange for fc comma y here. And we, and we can simplify this down to 150 root 3, which when we put into our calculator gives us a value of roughly 259.8. So roughly 259.8. Um, what are we working in here? Pounds. Okay. Cool. Now, since we have Fc comma y, we noted earlier that 600 is equal to the sum of Fa comma y and Fc comma y. Uh, we can therefore say here that Fa comma y is equal to 340.2 pounds. Okay. Um, right. So we have all the external forces acting on our um, truss here. Let's add them to our diagram. So now that we have all the external forces acting on our truss, we can consider what's happening internally here. 
So let's have a look at joint A for starters. We note that we have this 340.2 uh, acting up and 450 acting to the left. We can say then that uh, AB acts like this and that, um, uh, that AE acts like this. And we can say that AE is equal to 340.2. Uh, which is countering fa comma y here and that uh, what have we got here a b is equal to 450. just for clarity we could write it down here as well we can say a b is equal to 450 uh, pounds and then in brackets we could say whether it's in compression or tension evidently this is in tension that was poorly written, wasn't it? Uh, tension there. And uh, we can say AE is equal to uh, 340.2. And note they're acting kind of out on each other. That's compression there. Let's go ahead and have a look at the joints in the rest of, my, uh, in the rest of our truss here. So uh, joint A is evidently in equilibrium. Joint E, we have two unknowns in effect, although we don't know um, if there's a force in, in, uh, in BE here or DE here. Uh, joint B, again, there's, there's seemingly three unknowns here. Uh, joint D, again, there's seemingly three unknowns there. Let's have a look at joint C then, since we have this FC comma Y acting on joint C. That's acting up. The only thing that could counter that acting up would be CD here acting down and to the right. And then the only thing that could, uh, that could counter the right component of CD there would be um, uh, BC acting to the left. Okay, so let's have a look at joint C then. We have two unknowns, we have CD, we have BC there. Um, so let's just kind of draw a little free body diagram here. We have 259.8 acting up, we have CD acting down and to the left there, and we have BC uh, acting to the right, and we have this, this 30 degree um, angle here. <clears throat> we could note the fact that the um, uh, vertical component of CD here is going to be equal to this 259.8. Uh, we could say then, uh, if we are resolving vertically here, the sum of the forces in the Y are equal to zero, therefore, uh, we could say CD sine 30 is equal to 259.8. Therefore, uh, let's rearrange here. We can say CD is equal to 259.8 all over sine 30, which when we put into our calculator gives us a value of 519.6 here, 519.6 pounds. Um, so CD is equal to 5 19.6 pounds and this is in uh, let's have a look here this is in compression we could then note that the uh, horizontal component of cd is equal to bc so we could say therefore bc is equal to uh, 519.6 cos 30 which when we bung in our calculator gives us a value of 450. Okay, so 400, so BC takes a value of 450. And we note that BC here is in tension. Let's just label things up on our uh, diagram here. So we have AB, equal to 450, um, so we have 450 acting there as well. Uh, BC, we've just discovered, is also 450. Um, so we note then, uh, oh, let, let's, let's keep let, let's keep labeling up actually. So we know that CD is equal to 519.6. We know, um, yeah, that CD is equal to 519.6. So we've noted here, we've solved for um, joint C, 
Uh, we've also found that um, when we take uh, A, B, and B, C here, that joint B is in horizontal equilibrium. Now, evidently, there's only kind of one potential other horizontal idea here that would come from uh, member B, E, but joint B is already in horizontal equilibrium. So we can say then that uh, B, E is a zero force member, and by extension, that B, D is a zero force member, since that's the, that's the only thing offering a, a potential um, uh, vertical idea. We note then that um, D, E acts like this, and that DE takes a value of 519.6 as well. So we have DE then acting uh, on joint E like this. And there we have it. Um, to be extra sure, we could uh, look at joint E and just double check that it's in equilibrium. Uh, I've double checked it personally and, and uh, it is in equilibrium. We don't need to repeat ourselves here, um, basically. So these are all our forces. Uh, just to be uh, complete here, we, we could we could add whether DE is in compressional tension. Uh, let's say DE is equal to 519.6 and uh, the forces are acting like that. So we can say that DE is in compression. OK, so if you have any questions or comments about this problem, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.